of the Nitty Stew podcast. My name is Leanne. If you are here on episode three, thank you. You're probably a family member or a close friend, but I do hope to reach a, a wider audience and a, <clears throat> a larger sense of community. And yeah, thanks for joining me today. I, again, I said, my name is Leanne and I am a knitter and a flight attendant. I'm a mom, a wife, I'm a whack job, all kinds of stuff, but primarily I am just here to have fun and hopefully you'll cozy down with me. I'm here doing some uh, hotel knitting. This is actually the headboard. I, I often will knit in bed while I'm in the hotel and it kind of looks like a padded room, <laughs> which is where I should be when I explain what I did to try and get to two different yarn stores so I could get some footage for this podcast. I uh, <clears throat> originally was trying to get out to Kelowna and that's a small a uh, small city in British Columbia and I could not for the life of me get a layover there and uh, that would coordinate or work with with uh, schedule and then I was like oh I'm going out to where I am today I'm out I'm going out to Hamilton so I looked up what was going on in Hamilton and lo and behold Hamilton has a delightful yarn shop and it's called Hand Knit Yarn Studio and guess what on the day I'm here, it is closed. They are closed Monday. How dare people close their stores? I mean, of course. I, <laughs> I was like, no. So yes, they are not open on Mondays. I went so far as to email and say, hi, uh, I'm a weirdo basically. And I was asking if they were perhaps going to get an order or doing some you know, stocking or if there was gonna be somebody in the store just so I could stop in and make my birthday yarn dreams come true. Um, yeah, the owner that replied was very kind. And I said, don't worry, I'll, I'll be back for sure. And also they are having a yarn sale online that she's like, I'll just hold your order if you wanted to order something at 20% off. Now listen, that was very bold of me to email and be like, yeah, can somebody come in on their days off? No, no, they can't Leanne, so. I'm not sure if you are as crazy knitting uh, a knitting person as I am, you would do many things, including continually work on this. Um, I'm this is the Dunny Bag Hap, and I'm gonna sit here and knit on this while we chat today from Hamilton, the airport code for Hamilton, YHM, Hammertown. Um, yeah, I. I have to tell a story about this. So my husband, when I started bidding for Hamilton's, he's like, who who wants to go to Hamilton? Like, what the heck is going on? Do you have a second family out there? <laughs> like, what's going on? And the truth is, from Calgary to Hamilton, the flight time is generally between three and a quarter hours and definitely under four hours. And it's just the right amount of flight time. I actually quite enjoy the folks that come on board from Hamilton. They're, they're nice people and uh, you know, blue collar town really. However, um, it doesn't really have a great rap. So I don't know. I'm of the opinion that beauty is where you find it. And in this podcast today, I will be including some footage of the treasures that I found, uh, including I went and mapped out my route. So when I go to uh, the regular business hours of the hand knit yarn studio. I know exactly where it is. I've planned how I'm going to get there. There are bikes that are available, although the walk itself was only about 13 minutes from from my hotel. So, and uh, yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, Hamilton, Ontario, is uh, about an hour southwest of Toronto. Most people know where Toronto is. Toronto, Ontario, Canada and it is about 55 minutes drive to Niagara Falls, the amazing wonder of the world. One of the amazing wonders of the world. And it is, yeah, it's a delightful, delightful place. And um, last time I was here was pre-COVID, pre-lockdown, pre all that stuff. And my husband actually joined me on the layover and Dave and I went out to Niagara Falls. I'd never been. He had been when he was a young, a young man, and his family had done a trip from where they were living in Montreal. 
to Calgary where they ended up. And yeah, so it was it was a great experience. We rented a car and I think the most powerful thing for me about that one was uh, there's a place at Niagara Falls where you're underground, you go underneath the falls and just like the sound is unbelievable. It's just, it's the most powerful rumble I've ever heard. And you can kind of get out there as you walk through these stone tunnels and you can hear just the magnitude, the power, the force of the falls is incredible. The view itself also is really cool. Yeah, that was that was a great trip. And Dave was like, oh my goodness, like, how do you do that? Like what I was doing was the flight out the next day, which he had to join me on. The pickup time was 4.20 in the morning as it is tomorrow as well. And he was like, how do you now have to go to bed? Like we just went to Niagara Falls and come back and have to be in bed. The sun's not gone down yet, but if you want eight hours, you better believe it. So my, uh, my wind down time today will start at approximately six, six o'clock PM. And back home where I'm from Calgary, that's four o'clock PM. And I will have a nice, shower and something to eat and just really sit and knit for a while and I should be able to turn the lights off and be sleeping by 7 p.m. which would be ideal and then I will get a solid eight hours for my wake up around 3 a.m. and that's all good and I just fly the one leg back to Calgary and then I'm done and that's it until if I pick something up I have some time off for my birthday week. <laughs> I've started calling it birthday month, but typically we call May, the May 9th is BAM. We call BAM <clears throat> in my family. So it's my birthday, it's our anniversary, our wedding anniversary, and also Mother's Day. So BAM, right? Um, people think it's kind of weird that our my birthday and our wedding is on the same day. But there's a reason we eloped when I was 24, my husband was 28 years old, and we went down to Mexico to get married. And that wasn't a big thing back then. That was 1997. So we're coming up on our 25th anniversary. I still can't believe we pulled it off, but uh, we went down there to uh, Cancun, and then we took a ferry over to a small island called Isla Mujeres. And we tried to arrange the like the details from Calgary before going down, but we were having no luck. They didn't even have they didn't even have a, basically a fax machine like to get a hold of anyone. So we're like, well, let's go there and figure it out. And as fate would have it, we ran into an owner of a restaurant down there who was American but also spoke uh, fluent Spanish, and she said, "Oh, I know the judge." She's a lady and she, yeah, her and I, I know her, I'll go talk to her. If you have your wedding reception after, um, get married on the beach in front of my restaurant and I'll go talk to the judge. And she, she totally hooked us up. I still can't believe that, that it all worked out the way it did. And uh, we got married at sunset on Playa Norte in Estel Mujeres, but here was the sticker. The judge could only perform the ceremony on May 9th. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's my birthday. I was kind of hoping to do it, you know, not on that day, but whatever. It's a triple celebration. It is a trifecta of good times. All right, kind of just went off on a little tangent about me and <laughs> bam. And I, uh, I'll bring it back to some knitting. So what I'm wearing, uh, hello, does this, Cowl even need an introduction. Oh, this is my knitting crush, Andrea Mowry's design. It is the shift cowl. I made it in Brooklyn Tweed Loft in three awesome colors. I like the way the light's showing this. I'm gonna take it off though so you can see what's up. All right, if, if you haven't made this, I know a lot of people have. It's just, it's all slip stitches and I started to just go rogue 
I wasn't really even following the pattern at the end. I was like, I'm just feeling like more of the light color and I switched and I started doing all of that. Um, the seaming, I did a good job on the seaming. <laughs> As you can see, no, I didn't. Um, it started to come apart, but I quite, I like how you're, it seemed, you're supposed to seam it to the, like to there. And like so in the back. But it started to kind of come up with my not so great seeming. So I just, I let it, I let it. And now it's quite, it's quite wide and sort of hangs over my shoulders. Yeah, so I did write down the colors I used for this because I really like how they play. It's Brooklyn Tweed Locked. Okay, the, uh, this like kind of mustardy, mustardy one with the flex in it, that's called Caraway. And the sage green is called Foothills. And this dark brown, gray brown, darker color, that's called Truffle Hunt. Yeah. Anyway, I made it exactly a year ago and man, it gets a lot of wear. I, I love my, I love my shift cowl. I would make another one of these in a heartbeat for sure. Yeah. Ugh. Who doesn't love Andrea Mallory? I just, her patterns are just so wearable. And yeah, that's what I'm finding anyway. And yeah, I will be making more of her things. I have more of her patterns than I have made. Yeah, I think if I'm honest, this is, this is the only thing I've ever made by her. <laughs> could that be true? <laughs> it could be. I mean, I have them in my queue. What are you making right yeah. now? What's on your needles? Uh, I, I feel like this Dunny bag is going to be finished for my the next podcast. I'm on skein number two. Look at that yarn bar. <laughs> what? Why do I wind and pull from the middle? Quick snip there. Can you smell that? Look at this. Ah. I'm making my Dunny bag out of, Brook, um, I got Brooklyn Tweed on the mind. This is Briggs and Little. Briggs and Little Sport Weight in Sheep's Gray. It's just, it's amazing. You just get yarn for days. Canadian wool at its finest. Oh my gosh. I think it's like 480 yards per. So I, I'd made, I'd started this with one and I just switched over to the second one. And it's, uh, I think it's going to be a good size. I'm just going to keep knitting until I run out of yarn. I'm loving the details. I really do like the, I think it's supposed to be like waves, but for me as an Alberta girl, it's just like mountains. Yeah. Took an adventure walk in the Hamilton downtown core and went to its a historic district called Durand. And there's a place there, Durand Coffee. I, I went in there, I've, I've been there one other time. It was recommended by a knitting friend of mine called the, the Knitty Pine who lives out here. And she, she's like a big fan of the Durand coffee shop. And I went in there today and sat in it for a while. It was kind of raining a little bit off and on. And I, you know, people were talking to each other. One guy stopped in was just, he had a dog and it just, it felt really good to watch people just hanging out. And nobody was looking at me weird for sitting there knitting. One lady stopped and she said, oh, wow, what beautiful thing are you making? We had a little chat and she's like, oh, wow, knitting. That's a lost art. And I was like, oh, no, I was like, I didn't say anything. But I'm like, no, no, it is not. It is alive and well. Knitting is, it's thriving and I just, it, I guess that's just my perception, but I don't find it's a dying art at all. I think it's absolutely alive and well, especially after people were locked down. Some people hadn't knit for years. Um, I'd love to know in the comments how long you've been knitting uh, or crocheting. Crocheting is something I have not been able to do well. I took a learn to crochet class and I was off to the races. I made a cowl. But I just felt like my heart was, it's an interesting, fun process. 
I was like, it, first of all, uses a lot more yarn. And second, I just, I was, let's be honest, the length of time it would take me to get good at it. I was like, um, although my cousin, my wonderful cousin, Sherry, she, uh, she picked up both things and it's just, she can do it all. It's unbelievable. She is skilled. My family, um, my family, my husband's family, he's from metalsmiths and very, very interesting. He, one of his favorite podcasts is this guy who melts down any type of metal and create, makes bricks out of it or molds it into different shapes and every Friday. And the guy doesn't say a word. He just melts down the metal and Dave doesn't miss an episode. It's every Friday. And both of his brothers, both of Dave's brothers are like pipe fitters by trade. They work with metal. It's amazing. So what brought me onto that subject was like thinking about my cousin and how she picked up knitting, picked up crochet, and how in my family, my sister, uh, my eldest sister, she is a crochet, or crochet, a quilting machine, like literally makes unbelievable stuff. And she also um, top stitches them. She has the, the great big, I'm not a quilter, but she has the the big machine that does all the tops with all the fancy stitching and she makes quilts for for milestones in our family and it's just what a gift to have that then my other sister i probably should mention that there are five girls in my family and uh yeah each one of us has some sort of craft and skill and thing that we really like to do with our hands so yeah my next sister she's all about she can quilt too, as well, but she also does, um, well, I don't know if she's still doing it, but she was really into scrapbooking, but like, shabby chic, is that the word? Like, where she would make books with photos? She made one for me. And then my sister, Wendy, what can't she do? Like, she is, she spins, <laughs> she's, she started spinning, she bought a weaving machine and she's raising chickens, incredible stuff. And she's actually the one who taught me how to knit. So grateful for my Wendy. She is unreal. And then there's Mona and Mona as well. She, first of all, I think her love language, one of her love languages is cooking. She can, she can cook like our mom could and makes all that stuff that sticks to your ribs. And she can crochet too. She can knit too, I think. I'm pretty sure. And then there's me over here. I'm really a one-trick pony though. I, other than knitting, I, I do like photography. That is also something that I find is very creative and a wonderful outlet. And I see things and I, and I love to capture. I, I do, I really love to capture the beauty that's around us. And I think it is where you find it including here in Hamilton. I decided to look up some fun facts about Hamilton that most people don't know. Okay, the first Tim Hortons Canadian restaurant chain, if you're not from Canada. The first Tim Hortons, known for its coffee and donuts, was founded in 1964 here in Hamilton. Of course, Niagara Falls might be the most popular waterfalls in North America, but did you know that the waterfall capital of the world is actually 50 miles west. First telephone exchange in the British Empire took place right in downtown Hamilton. Who oh, no. knew? Hamilton also has the biggest botanical garden in Canada. 2,700 acres, Royal Botanical Gardens in Hamilton is the largest botanical garden in Canada and one of the largest in the world. Also, the author of the English lyrics to O Canada was born in Hamilton. So that's kind of cool. Very interesting. Um, and I'm actually looking at McMaster University, which is just outside um, my hotel here. Um, also, this came in time for birthday week. It's Wool Week. Look at that. Eek! It's the Shetland, Shetland Wool Week book um they put this out every year it's an annual 
and I was watching some of the YouTube podcasts of the pattern designers talking about their patterns and it it inspired me to no end while the photography is unbelievable but I love the crofter's kip <laughs> I'm saying that like the crofter's kip uh, look at these by will by Wilma Malcolmson this beauty and they show it in, I think, six different, four different colorways. All in Jameson and Tweet, or Jameson and, why am I not thinking of the name? Jameson's of Shetland. Oh, yes. Two ply. I love, I love hats and I love color work. So that one in particular, and then there was also... Oh, I'll have to show this one to my sister. This is a weaving, uh, a weaving design. Look at this. It's called the Oiger scarf. So my sister's got the weaving machine. Maybe she can use this for a pattern. It's got the warp and the structure and the set. In terms, I don't know. This is pretty cool too. This harbor cowl. Look how bright that is. That's cool. Photography is stunning. I will finish with the cuteness. Like this is almost too cute to be even real. Like this little girl wearing this little pinafore. It's called the Lizzie pinafore. Come on, look at this. Okay, this is what the pinafore looks like with her little boots and her little stockings. But look at that. Oh. Seriously, adorable. That one's by Gudrun Johnson. Oh, I think that should just be framed and put on a wall. Mm. So that was happy birthday to me. It came, I ordered it right from the Shetland Woolwig website. I think yarn stores do carry it, but I wanted to order it right from them. And okay, so that's it for now. I did get my hair done and my eyebrows uh, and that's about it for birthday week BAM so I will just carry on I hope you're staying well and whatever your knitting is giving you joy I yacked this whole episode and didn't even grab my tea <laughs> and how did almost 30 minutes go by I'm not really sure Okay, well, again, thank you so much for, for coming by and joining me in the knit, in the knit time, a little hotel knitting. Please feel free to leave comments and subscribe. Hopefully we can uh, keep this rolling. All right, signing out from Hamilton until next time.